Hi, this is Rachel, and um, last night I had attended um, Sam Amarante, um, sorry if I mispronounce it, the attorney of John Wayne Gacy, and uh, he did a, like a speech about him as a young attorney and about his book, which currently is completely sold out except for on Amazon so anyway um, even the libraries don't have any to um, lend out because everybody's lended them you know everybody's checked them out at this time so I just want to first start with I don't agree with what John Wayne Gacy did and uh, you know look at me do I look okay you know I just got confronted at the tobacco store that I go to and the lady asked me what was wrong and I've been crying since last night after I left like I couldn't even barely see dry driving because the tears were so thick. But anyway, this lady's like, when I told her why I was crying, she started yelling and saying, why would you put yourself in that position? Why would you go see him? Why would you do that? That was gruesome. She's like, why would you do that? Of course you're upset. And I went into an explanation. But anyway, before that, I want to tell you guys, see me right now, I am not a hypocrite on anything on my channel. When I'm saying that um, highly sensitive people and empaths need to go out there, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, do I look okay? No. But you know what? That's just the way it is. I still have to get gas today. I still got stuff to do. And I'm crying in public everywhere. I don't care. Anyway. So I wanted to say that if anybody has a problem with um, Sam Amarante, or however you say it, um, you got a problem with me. So you got a problem with him, you got a problem with me. Look at me, do I look okay? And then like I'm saying when I don't look okay that if you got a problem with him, you got a problem with me. Well that must be because I was thinking about stuff or I see things a certain way. And I'm going to tell you, one, he wrote an eye search law that has now developed into the Amber Alert law. First of all, you know, with, when this was all done with John Wayne Gacy, he wrote a law that had to do with eye search because he said nobody would look for a child at any age, doesn't matter if they're a to infant, toddler, or teenager, they wouldn't look for 72 hours. So his eye search law was a or his eye search thing was able to, um, you know, provoke the system to start looking for these children immediately, and now it has developed into an amber alert. So anyway, that's one thing. Two, he's doing these um speeches where apparently people are getting ignorant and and or rowdy or you know just confrontational saying how how could you represent him how could you do that how could you do this how could you not kill him there's uh, one guy last night and it's all recorded it's going to be on youtube i'm going to save it to you know a separate playlist and uh It'll be out in a couple days. But this was in Kankakee, Illinois, 423-2019. But anyway, somebody saying all that stuff about him. Oh, somebody said, okay, because there was 33 victims he was convicted of. There was 34, but they couldn't convict him without that body. But this dude kept saying, well, how would you feel if he, if they, he went and did number 35 because of you? How would you feel about that? Now, the attorney was saying, if he was the father of one of these children, he doesn't know what he would do. But at the same time, apparently, 
this attorney has taken an oath that he's so dedicated to that he was representing somebody he didn't want to. He didn't want to deal with that. Who wants to deal with that? He represented them, you know, because he took an oath as an attorney. Now, you guys are going to diss on somebody who's going to represent somebody, you know, uh, fairly, whether they want to or not. You know, you would want that in court, too. I've had lazy ass uh, attorney or a couple of attorneys defend me. They don't read the whole case and they show up unprepared because they think cutting deals with the um, state's attorney or another attorney, you know, they got clout. So it doesn't matter what's going on. They got your, um, they're, the state's attorney already has, uh, and the judge already has what they want you to sign already. So anyway, he was doing his job. He also said that the first phone call he ever got when he went from a public defender to solo was from John Wayne Gacy, uh, someone saying that John Wayne Gacy wanted his representation. The first day he's in his new office going solo. So you can't tell me, you can't tell me that it wasn't fate because this man put out a law that he put out a law that children can get looked for immediately. So I don't think it's fair to judge him or go and get ignorant or rowdy or be threatening to him or his family. It's not fair. And you know what it is? You're going to get judged for not forgiving. Because even if you don't forgive, and then you forget that you didn't forgive, you're still going to be the one that's judged. You're still the one that's pointing those fingers at yourself. And, uh, you know, so I just think that people need to see it in a different perspective. You know, what if him being like an attorney is like you being a protective parent? And that you would be there by your child's side no matter what they do. And you would keep that child's secrets. You know what I'm saying? That's all he was doing. Except for he had to do it. What is he supposed to do? Lose his license? It makes no sense. And the fact that he was able to even accomplish that without freaking out. You know, when he was a new attorney. You know? He, I, I don't know about criminal law, but I think that any attorney can withdraw on your ass. And from what he was saying, and it might be in the book, I don't want to tell everything. <coughs> I have no idea what I was about to say, but I'm not going to get rid of this video just because I don't remember. But anyway, I'm just going to say this, is that he heard all the nasty details I couldn't deal with it. He was having a hard time deal with it. And he was being strong. A lot of people would have killed themselves. A lot of people would have, you know, with John as an attorney. Oh, because he got uh, new information. Because I think he could, could have withdrawn. I don't know about back then or really about criminal law. <coughs> he could have withdrawn. <coughs> By saying, dude, telling Gacy, I just found out new information and you lied to me. You know? Or we're not having a very good uh, client-attorney relationship or whatever. You know? So anyway, I'm not okay with it, what happened. And he, he, you know, this attorney didn't say anything bad and he didn't give a lot of details. But it brought up all the emotion about the crime and everything. So, you know, I've been really upset. But, you know, anybody who's chronically suicidal, anybody who's going through some pain, anybody who's in a position where they have no way to vent, to confess or anything, should read his book and look at him as an example, as somebody who was able to get through all that. How is he 
at fault for having to um, follow the rules of the system. You know? If it was somebody else, y'all would be getting fired or quitting at work. You know what I'm saying? This attorney was going through shit just like, you know, some crazy thing. You know? It, like if I... The only way for me to describe what I feel like he went through is as if people had torches and shit in his fucking yard. Excuse me for cussing. Um, you know, that's, that's how, how in your face. And the fact that, you know, he was able to maintain his family without getting a divorce. That's strength. And that's strength in marriage. You know, and the fact that he's putting himself out there and made this book, which he said that his wife was the one who influenced him and suggested writing the book. He said writing the book, doing these speeches, passing the ice search law, which turned into the Amber Alert. You know, he is redeemed. Even though he never really was at fault. For needing to represent somebody like that. I understand what people say. But it's not his fault. That John Wayne Gacy went and did this stuff. And he needs representation. You know what I'm saying? So. I just think that people got a problem with him. They got a problem with me. Because. I saw him in person. I was there. You know what? And he's going to remember me because I was wearing a white jacket and I took pictures with him. He's very friendly. You know, he was very nice. He was not stuck up. He was not arrogant. And that's another thing. I didn't even like, you know, as open minded as I am, I'm not even thinking that any attorney on the planet even uses the word fate or believes in destiny. And he was talking about the fate and you want to know what else he was talking about? He was talking about having some serious issues when he was holding on to John Wayne Gacy's uh, jacket. He said the cat would, would hiss around it. You know, things would go wrong. There would be arguments, you know, or somebody was getting hurt. This jacket was there. He had to give it away. He gave it to uh, Man Cow. Give it, that guy has John Wayne Gacy's leather jacket now. Man Cow. So anyway, I just think it's very important to keep your mind open and see him more as like any attorney who is supposed to be like similar to somebody that protects you, you know, and I know people are going to say that I'm wrong because of a lot of attorneys are liars, but they're supposed to represent being your angel and having your back, which is like being your parent, okay? And I know, I know in my heart that if he was a parent of one of these children, he would feel like any of us. But he had to hide it. He had to hide it. He was feeling it in himself. He wasn't able to show us. So anyway, I just want to say one last thing is, for any empaths and highly sensitive people, if you can't put yourself out there to look like this, what's wrong with you? Because I did. I don't care if I look crazy or if I look like I got boyfriend problems. They don't know what's going on. But I can tell you, when people see people like this and they're like halfway sane, you know, it influences them to have feelings and being vulnerable too. You know, and all I hope for is that when I was able to, um, you know, give him like a side hug, I hope that I was able to take some of his pain away. Anyway, thank you.